Sheldon, yeah. Chaz Tenenbaum was a financial expert and started buying real estate in his early teens. Wes Anderson says the Royal Tenenbaums is a family story. Inspired by the works of J.D. Salinger and Orson Welles's The Magnificent Ambersons, told as a bittersweet New York fairy tale. Yet, he went to great lengths to avoid filming the Big Apple's landmarks. Gene Hackman reportedly couldn't understand Anderson's quirky methods. For instance, a scene shot in front of the Statue of Liberty never showed the Statue of Liberty. The director argued he was making his own version of the city. He wanted to fill it in with imagined landmarks, like the Lindbergh Palace Hotel, which plays home to the main character, Royal Tenenbaum. This fictional world is inhibited by both Hollywood royalty, like Hackman and Angelica Houston, and Hollywood's younger stars, like Luke Wilson and Gwyneth Paltrow. Critics at the time pointed out that the whole cast was at the top of their game, and Gene Hackman would eventually go on to win a Best Acting Golden Globe for his portrayal for the dysfunctional patriarch. Anderson's collaboration with his constant director of photography, Robert Yeoman, also reached a milestone with this film. The carefully composed visual framing, as well as the lavish colors, not only received high praise, but also inspired many photographers, filmmakers, and fashion designers to follow this aesthetic. As for the top-notch writing of the script, it landed Anderson and co-writer Owen Wilson, a Best Original Screenplay Oscar nomination. The movie was being called the film of the year. Directors like Cameron Crowe praised its music and its memorable characters. And critics called it the most quintessential New York City movie since 1979's Manhattan. Wes Anderson once said he wanted the film to feel timeless. And watching it, you never know what time period you're in, even 20 years later. You probably don't even know my middle name. That's a trick question. You don't have one. Helen. Mm. Oh, yeah.